Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part eight of our tile-based game, and in this video we will talk about how to handle our mob movement, having it chase the player and collide with the walls properly. Okay, let's look at where we are so far. We have a player who can run around the screen, and we have some zombie mobs that we can spawn that currently cannot move, but they can follow the player's location, or they can watch the player's location. So they always turn so that they're always pointing at the player. So now we want to make these mobs uh, chase our player around. So I'm going to add a couple more vectors here. I'm going to add a velocity vector. That's going to be how fast the mob is moving. And I'm also going to add an acceleration vector. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that the zombie doesn't turn on a dime, you know, instantly change direction. If we move past the zombie, then it's going to turn towards us, but it's going to need to slowly uh, change its direction. So it will look more like it's running than if it then it's uh, instantly, you know, changing direction and, and turning on a dime. So we have these two variables to track that. So we already know what direction the player is in because we've turned to point at that. So our rotation variable is going to tell us what direction we want to accelerate in to move towards the player. So our acceleration is just going to be something and what we can do is we can go over to our settings here and we're going to add a new variable here called the mob speed. This is going to be this is going to control how fast our mobs are going to run. And we're going to make that be a little bit slower. We don't want them to be as fast as our, or faster than our player, at least not yet. I'm going to set that to 150. Okay. So, now we have our whoop, wrong File there. So we have our vector. Our vector is just going to be mob speed. Right? We want to run in the forward direction rotated at whatever our rotation is. Okay, and then that's going to accelerate the player in the right uh, in the right direction. Okay. Alright, and then I want to take the velocity and that's just going to be the acceleration times the game's dt. And then our position is going to be the velocity times the dt plus one half of oops, one half of the acceleration times the dt squared. And that comes from our equations of motion, which um, if you haven't watched the previous video uh, where I talked about the equations of motion, I'll link to that below. And now we know where our sprite should be. So I'm just going to set the rect.center equal to self.pos. Okay, so that's going to be enough for the moment. Now Let's just make sure this works. I'm going to get rid of these other mobs. I only want to have one to deal with uh, at the beginning. Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. Oops, and we have a little typo here. That's supposed to be plus equals. All right, so now my mob is going to accelerate towards my player, right? So you see him accelerating towards the player, but he's very floaty. Right? He takes a long time to turn around and come back um, because he has no friction. So he's accelerating towards me at a constant rate, which makes him go faster and faster and faster, and then uh, he cannot stop. So we need to slow him down a little bit, or basically make him um, have some resistance against his movement, add some friction. And a simple way to do that is 
once we've figured out what our acceleration is, our direction, we're going to take the acceleration and we're going to add a little bit to it. Oops. We're just going to add a little bit of negative value to the acceleration based on how fast he's going. So that's going to basically, the faster he's going, the higher this number will be, so the less he'll accelerate. So he's going to hit a maximum speed that he can't go faster than. Okay, And there we go. So you see him chasing after me, but he has a maximum speed. He doesn't keep accelerating sexy. He's hit the maximum speed. Okay, So now he can chase me around, and I can run away. But of course, he has a big advantage over me because he is not stopped by the walls. All right, so I need him to collide with the walls in the same way that the player does, which means we need to do the same thing we did with the player, where we took the movement and we broke it down into the x component and the y component and tried to collide with the walls uh, in both. Now, I could take this collide with walls and I could copy and paste it, right? And I could take this whole thing, copy and paste this down into my mob class and have it work for that as well. Problem with that becomes what happens when I decide I want to do this a little differently? I'm going to have to change it in more than one place, right? Copying and pasting is always a bad idea. It means there's probably a better way to do it. And the better way to do it would be to take this function and remove it from the player and make it a function that any sprite can use. Okay, So we're going to take that and uh, we're going to paste this up at the top here. Okay, So this is going to be a new function. Uh, we're going to indent that. Oops. Oh, we're good. Okay. Uh, so this is a new function and what this function is going to do is it's no, no longer a, a method in a class, so it doesn't have a self anymore. It's just going to take a sprite and some group and then the direction. Okay, And so I just need to take everywhere I have self by itself here, self is going to change to sprite. So if sprite.vel Right, all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to take, I'm just hitting Command D, Control D if you're on Windows, um, to grab every time I see the word self and select it so that I can change that to sprite. Okay, and then the other thing is the thing we collide with is not going to be game.walls. We're going to say group here because we're just passing it the, the sprite we want to collide with and the group we want to collide with. Okay, now everything else will stay the same. We don't have to change anything else about that. So now for the player to use that, we need to go back over here and it's no longer self, oops, no longer self collide with walls, right? It is just collide with walls. And what we have to do is tell it what uh, sprite to use, which is self and the walls. And we can make sure that that is working by going over here and making sure that we still uh, collide with the walls. Okay, But now we can do this exact same thing uh, with the mob. And we can have the mob work the same way. So right, we're going to take this and we're going to split this into two and move the center x and the center y separately, just like we did with the player. And that will let us use that function the same way. So center x, center y, self.pause.x, pause.y. And then we say, uh, oops, collide with walls, self. And then I'll duplicate that. 
Oops, I left off the quote there. Uh, and we shift that down and we call that one Y. All right, now if we go and run that, we should see our mob. Oop, I remember what we left off. The mob also now needs a hit rect. Remember, we had to have the separate rectangle that did not change proportions as our sprite rotated. So we need a hit rect for our mob. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the settings too, because that's going to be something we might want to adjust. So the mob hit rect. The mob hit rect is going to be um, I think it's a little smaller than the player. Uh, we'll see how it works. I just want to put something in there and let it work. So go down here to our class mob and then when we when we start the mob, right, we need to use that hit rect. So we're going to say uh, hit rect Uh, we want a copy of that. We're going to have more than one. We're going to have lots of mobs, so everyone is going to be a have a hit rect that's a copy of the one in the settings. And we set our hit rect dot center equal to the rect dot center. And then we just need to in our update we move our uh, hit rect here, not our regular. Right, our hit rect gets adjusted by the collide with walls function. And then we just set our regular rect equal to wherever that hit rect wound up after colliding with the walls. Okay, so now our mob should run into the walls. And I can even probably get him stuck on the wall. Yeah, see, so he can't go through there. If I go fast enough, He's going to be stuck. He can't go through the wall. Aha. Okay. More progress. We got a lot done this time around, uh, but that will be it for this video. We now have our mobs moving properly and running into the walls uh, like they're supposed to. And in the next video, we can start talking about how we could uh, have the mobs injure the player when they hit him. And we can also talk about how we're going to defend ourselves. Uh, so I'll see you next time. In the meantime, please uh, hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Thanks.